Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create a key performance indicator using Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. What I'm going to do first of all is just log into our environment. And we're going to take a look at our menu. Now you'll see that a key performance indicator uh, is just a visual indication of how our business is doing. We provide two measurements. We provide an actual and a target measurement as well as different dimensions. I'm just going to create a new KPI here and I'll show you what this editor looks like. Okay, so you'll see as we go through here that there's this process train and we have several steps that we need to complete to uh, create this KPI. I can put in here a brief description if I want to. I'm going to leave that blank for right now. I do have to provide an actual and a target value though. And if I want to use some of the built-in functions, I can utilize those as well. Let me just click on here. And we're dealing with our sample sales subject area. And we're looking at our base facts. So the actual fact that I'm looking at is revenue. And for the target value, I'd like to take a look at our target revenue. The data format, we can edit that as well. Let's treat numbers as currency and we'll specify United States dollar. If we have any negative numbers, we're going to use a minus as opposed to parentheses. We'll have two places after the decimal and we'll use our thousands separator, so a comma. Okay, so hit OK. We can also enable trending. So trending just tells us how we're doing, you know, year by year or month by month. It just compares one to the next. Okay, so we need to specify how we're comparing. And I'd really like to compare by month. Now by default, the tolerance is set to zero, which means if it changes at all in either direction, we'll get an indication. If we set the tolerance to, let's say, 3%, then it's only going to give us an indication that there was uh, any trending if it's beyond that 3%. Let's take a look at dimensionality. What I'd like to do is define our KPI value for these dimensions here. I'm going to take a look at the time hierarchy. Value is prompted simply means that when we have our KPI watch list, the end user can specify what the value is instead of us pinning it. Let's also put in here the office hierarchy. And then we'll add one more dimension in here. Let's take a look at our sales rep hierarchy. Okay, so this is across several dimensions. And then we'll take a look at our states. By default, we'll have three states, OK, warning, and critical. If you want to add another state, no problem. All you need to do is hit this checkbox right here. And you'll see we now have more options. So if we want to maybe add a state between critical and warning, we can hit this plus here and say add above. Let's give it a different name. Let's call this fair. You know, in fact, let's let's flip-flop these. Okay, fair, warning, and critical. Let's also change this color. And you can also change the icon. So we have all different types of icons. I'll just put a little purple triangle in there. Under actions, you can actually have an action get kicked off if one of these KPIs is in effect. We'll leave that alone for right now. And then let's take a look here at our thresholds. Now a threshold is just the boundary between two different states. So I like to set this threshold to be, let's set this to 90%. Let's set this one to 85, and we'll set this one to 80. Okay, so define as percent of target value. If you uncheck that, then you actually have to provide 
a formula or a column. So we'll leave that like we had it. And here is the score, and that's going to be displayed in the KPI. If you want to change those values, you can. I like to just stick with the defaults. If the KPI returns no data, then we're not going to assign any status to it. If you want, you can assign a status. You can say, look, maybe it's uh, critical if there's no data. Related documents. You can add two different types of related documents. You can add a catalog item, so you just browse through your catalog and find it, or you can provide a URL link. I'm going to leave those blank. So for custom attributes, you can add a new custom attribute if you want. And what that does, you just give it a label and you would give it a formula just like you would uh, you know, adding a column to anything else and it would be added to your KPI. Let's leave that alone too right now. So I'll just hit remove. We're pretty much finished. So I'm gonna hit finish and I'm gonna save this for right now under my folders. Let me just create a little folder called KPIs. And we're going to call this Revenue KPI. Okay, now if we want to add the KPI to a dashboard, we actually have to first add it to a KPI watch list. A KPI watch list is just a collection of KPIs, and you can uh, make your KPI entries either pinned or unpinned, and we'll talk about those differences here. So let's just create a KPI watch list. And in here I'm going to find my KPI. I'm going to drag it onto here. And here are the dimensions that we specified. I'm going to leave these alone. So use point of view is just going to let us during runtime select the values. I'm going to set this to say unpinned. We'll also have a visual indicator. Okay, now I'm going to add it again, except this time I'm going to pin this to year 2010. There we go. You'll see that the icon is a little bit different. There's a blue pin right there. I'm going to add it one more time. Maybe we're interested in the office's hierarchy. Okay, so if we say, for example, you can do a corporate total. Or you can get even more detailed. You can say, I'm just interested in stock plus. Or maybe stock plus in year 2009. I'm going to give these appropriate names. Let me go back in here edit this watch list entry. Edit this watch list entry as well. So now we have four entries based all on the same KPI. One of them is unpinned, the rest of them are pinned. If I go in here and I decide to look at the data for, let's say, 2008, now a lot's going on query-wise behind the scenes and that's why this takes a while, so be patient. And here you can see the trending. So it looks like there is an upward trending in 2010. And there is a downward trending for this one down here. OK, so I'm happy with my watch list. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'll save it right under here. I'll just say new KPI watch list. And now if I want to add this to a dashboard, uh, I already have an existing dashboard under my private area here. So my folders, dashboards. Let's 
go ahead and edit this. It's an empty one right now. And all we need to do is find our KPI watch list and we can drag it onto here. Now it asks us whether we want these pinned or not. Let's just say not pinned. I'm going to save this and now we can run it. Okay, so we have our nice little visual indicators. If we were to make this look a little nicer, let's edit the dashboard again. I'm going to add another column above the existing one and to it I'm going to add an image here. This is going to be our company logo. I'm not going to have it link anywhere so I'll just use the FMAP syntax. Whoops. Whoops, we go ahead and save this and then we run it and it's looking pretty nice. Now, if you want to take one of these individual KPIs and create an analysis from it, it's pretty easy. Just highlight it, go to Objects, and say Analyze. Okay, now let's uh, allow the pop-ups here. Okay, so we're able to create an analysis. If we now want to edit it, we can click on Edit and make whatever modifications. Maybe we want to go to the criteria and drag and drop other columns. We might be interested in not only the actual and target and all that information, but also maybe product type. Now it's still not showing up in the table. That's because it's in the excluded drop target. That's an easy fix. We'll just go in here and move this right into here. So now we can see an even more detailed uh, view of, you know, what the KPIs are across the product types. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.